We thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that it will fall on good soil, Lord, and I thank you that you'll meet people at their point of need. Father, if people need Jesus, they're going to find him. Hallelujah. If they need healing in their body, they're going to be healed. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. As today's Communion Sunday, so we're going to our covenant meal. We're going to receive our covenant meal today. And uh, I, I was saying, Lord, you know, I love, when we have it, I like to talk about communion because that's what this day is dedicated to. And Wednesday night, we just finished up a series that we've been doing for a long time on the blood covenant. All right. And in Hebrews chapter 6, it says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is the mediator of a better covenant which is established on better promises. And Wednesday night, we looked at the new covenant in our studies of the blood covenant. You know, and what we found out, and, and with the blood covenant, God entered into man. Every covenant that he's ever entered into man with was based on blood. Blood, you know, when we talked about blood covenant, we said it means to, covenant means to where the, where the blood flows. All right? And uh, they, we saw that in his covenants, that the, some were conditional and some were unconditional. Uh, a conditional covenant is, you do this and I'll do that. An unconditional covenant, it, it's simply, you don't have to do anything. Really, the only thing you have to do in an, uh, an unconditional covenant is believe that it's unconditional. Okay? Uh, and, and so when God created Adam and Eve, uh, there was a condition in that first covenant that he made with them. We call it the Edemic Covenant. God would supply every single thing they needed to sustain life. Everything. There's one condition to the covenant. Don't eat of the tree. All right? There was no blood spilled in that covenant. But in any event, he said, I will supply everything for you. You don't have to worry about anything. Just don't eat of the tree. So it was a conditional covenant. We all know they broke the covenant. So God comes along, and he makes them another covenant with Adam and Eve, called the Edemic Covenant. An unconditional covenant that he was going to send a Savior into the world to pay for the sins of mankind. And that Adam and Eve, they didn't have to do anything. They just had to believe that that was going to happen. And God sealed that covenant with the shedding of blood because at that time they were naked. Then they sinned. They tied fig leaves around themselves. They tried to cover. You know, people do that all the time. They try to cover their sin in their own flesh. And you know what? You can't. Your arms are too short to box with God. You know that? Amen. You just can't box with God. So we need to get that thing out of our head. So they were trying to hide their own sin. Guilt comes. Fear comes. We get afraid. We hide when we, when we mess up. And God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to shed blood. And I'm going to cover your sin. And he, they started wearing apes, aprons of skin. So that was really the first blood covenant that we know of in the Bible. When God actually killed the animal and covered their blood. And that was an unconditional covenant. Okay? Now, it's called the Edemic Covenant. And there, that promise was given that there was going to be a Savior. And, and there were several covenants in the Word of God, and they all led up to the New Covenant. Now, the interesting thing about the New Covenant, which we're going to see here in a minute, is the fact that the New Covenant that we so proudly boast of as believers in Jesus Christ was actually a covenant for Israel. Okay? It was for Israel because Israel, man, they were rascals. They kept sinning. They kept messing up. No, they were just unfaithful to God. So we'll look at that in a minute. But so, and uh, he, he, so he made this, so now he has a new and better covenant that he was making with Israel. We get to be in on this new and better covenant, okay? We get to accept Jesus Christ, and we're in a new covenant with God. But uh, he had the Abrahamic covenant, which was an unconditional covenant, and we talked about this. Nationally recognized covenant. I mean, Judaism recognizes it. Uh, Muslims recognize it because... 
It was a covenant that was made with Abraham. Abraham had two children. All right? One of them uh, was Ishmael. One of them was Isaac. You know, Ishmael is the, is the father of the Muslim religion. Isaac is the father of the re is Israeli, is Israel, and the Christian religion. So it's a recognized covenant. It was unconditional. All they had to do was believe. Now, we know over the centuries, things have gotten messed up. And I'm not here to debate that today or anything else like that. But that was an unconditional covenant. All Abraham had to do was believe God. Amen. Uh, then, and, and there was, I mean, you have to, like, you can go online and listen to the whole series. Because there's just, I can't cover it all today. Uh, then he came up with a conditional covenant. The Mosaic covenant. After he got them out of Israel. And there, that, we call it the laws. The law. The Mosaic up and there was and, and it was conditional and there were 633 conditions that they had to keep in that law in order they, to remain right with God which they found out they just couldn't keep them okay and then we have the Davidic covenant which is the promise restated that Jesus was coming through the line of David which brings us to the New Covenant. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 26. Because Jesus, you know, we, every church today is going to quote this verse of Scripture if they're having communion. If you go to a denominational church or if you go to a Catholic church, you know, every Sunday they quote this. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. Jesus is there and it says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Amen. The new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Now, it's interesting. Jesus uses the word new covenant. Jesus is speaking to the disciples, all 12 of them sitting in the upper room. No one else. He's talking about a specific covenant which Jesus expected the disciples to be familiar with. Amen. Okay? Because, and, and, and Jesus just assumed they would be familiar with this new covenant that he was talking about. And uh, if you look in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 37, you don't have to go there, we're not going to read it. But he talks about the new covenant that he's going to make with Israel. So them being Hebrews, partaking of all the sacrifices and Passover and Day of Atonement, they should be familiar with this new covenant because Israel was waiting for the Messiah to come to give them the new covenant. Unfortunately, they blew it. They missed Jesus. All right? So, but this was not only the sin for Israel, it was for mankind. <laughs> and it wasn't according to the Mosaic Covenant. The, the, the Jewish people were so, they made a, an idol out of the Mosaic Law. Okay? They made an idol out of it. And with all its rules and regulations that they couldn't keep. And they tried to. And, and, you know, rules, regulations don't make you closer to God. They make you frustrated. Because you can't keep them. It's just an impossibility. It's a totally sell, it's total selling out to God. Humbling yourself saying, you know what? I can't do this. And you can't. And any honest person would say that. We can't. Because we're born again. We have a new spirit. But we have this flesh that just doesn't want to do right. Just to give you an example. This morning, I had my phone sitting in the kitchen. And a certain individual that's sitting on the front row on that side. <laughs> fourth one from that side of the room. Spilled soda. I said, did he get my phone? 
They said, no, I moved to Justin's son. I said, thank God I had to kill Daryl and ask God to forgive me. <laughs> because your flesh isn't redeemed yet. Okay? Thank God for the covenant. Just saying. But it was a conditional covenant, the Mosaic covenant. Israel agreed to uphold God's law in order to keep it. They couldn't do it. The covenant in Jeremiah is unbreakable. The ultimate fulfillment of that covenant wasn't, wasn't thwarted by the faithlessness of the nation of Israel. The covenant was going to happen anyway. Whether they remained faithful to God, whether they kept the Mosaic covenant, whether they received Jesus or not, there's going to be a new covenant hands down. Unconditional unbreakable and and, and 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 it will be brought about because he says I will put my my law in their minds and write it on the tablets of their hearts if you read Jeremiah chapter 31 and the origin of that covenant is based on a promise that God made to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 15 he promised that his Seed would be like the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. He says it's going to happen. Don't matter what happens in between. Israel is coming back to God as a nation. You know, but uh, and, and God promises it over in, in Jeremiah chapter 32. He said, God says, I will gather them back to myself. Uh, and, and it's also brought out in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36. The same thing is said. I will bring them, gather them back to myself. Wow, that's so good. So, the new covenant supersedes that Mosaic covenant. And, it's, and, and really, it's an add-on, an addendum to the Abrahamic covenant to include us. <laughs> right? To include us. Back then, we weren't included in the covenant. But now, because of that new covenant, we are added into it. And we're going to read that here in a couple of minutes. Uh, even in the book of Hebrews, it talks that the Mosaic covenant, or the law, <coughs> it would, had faults in it. Because if it was faultless, there wouldn't have been a new one. Amen. And again, it's called better. It's called better because it's established on better promises. Amen. You know, just I'm going to throw this out there because, you know, we live in a really volatile political environment today. But I'm here to tell you right now, and I don't, if you believe, I don't care if you agree with me or you don't, this is the Bible. God is not done with Israel. And, and anyone who messes with Israel, they got a major problem. Whether you believe it or not, because you just check history and anybody that messed with Israel, Anybody, any nation, any country that ever messed with Israel, even if God allowed them to mess with Israel because of Israel's sin, they were destroyed. Their economies fell, their nations, everything were just destroyed. You just go right like down the line from way back when in the Old Testament right up into modern day. Any nation. I heard this guy on television saying that, you know, we revolve... Everything revolves around a nation of 7 million people, but there's 350 million other people over in the Middle East. And everything, too bad. Israel belongs to God. Just get over it. You might not like them. We have our cute little names that we call people and everything else like that. But guess what? They are still the apple of God's eye. He started the whole thing with Abraham. Abraham was from the Ur of the Chaldeans. Abraham wasn't Jew. There was no Hebrew nation until Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And that, that was the only nation. That little strip of land over there was the only nation in the world that was born supernaturally. Just by believing God. Don't mess with Israel. And while you're at it, don't mess with the church. 
Don't mess with the church of Jesus. Because Jesus is the head of the church. And once the government messes with the church, they got a problem. And we don't have to do anything. We don't have to revolt or nothing. Because that's right. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He'll take him out. He'll take him out. Anyway. Didn't mean to get sidetracked like that, but it's good anyway. Anyway. Uh, so every covenant that we have, every covenant is ratified by blood. What's that mean, ratified? What's that mean? Validated. It's validated by blood. As far back as the Garden of Eden, you know, the connection between blood and forgiveness or atonement was always established by God. Well, as we did these teachings on the blood covenant in Genesis chapter 9, verse 4, and Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says life is in the blood. Yeah. There is something about the blood. All right? And, and like all other covenants, all other covenants, the new covenant, the new covenant is validated and ratified by blood, the blood of the spotless Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. Amen. And today when we have our covenant, that is what we are doing. We are putting ourselves in remembrance of this new and better and valuable and precious covenant that we got to be part of simply because we believe the man died on a cross over 2,000 years ago and rose, on the dead, rose from the dead on the third day and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Alive, making intercession for us forevermore. And we're going to celebrate his birthday in a couple of three weeks here. 23 days, 22 days, 21 days, 21 days. They change little things that I don't know. Anyway, and it's so interesting because it says unto us, a child is born and a son is given. And if I were you, I would tune in Christmas Day at 10 o'clock on Facebook, and I'll talk about that. Amen. But not today. Amen. Yeah, but I can. That's why I can. Yeah, you can all stay in your pajamas, but I got to get dressed. I just might show up in shorts and sandals, man. <laughs> Standing in front of my Christmas tree with shorts and sandals on and my Tommy Bahama shirt. So yeah. Really, I'm in Florida, folks. I just <laughs> anyway, praise God. <laughs> but again, so we have this, the Jesus. And even in the book of Hebrews, it indicates that the blood of Jesus was what redeemed us from sin. You know, Jesus at the Last Supper basically changed the ordinance. And really, from that, from 70 years after that point, even today, they still do not sacrifice goats, animals, sheep, or whatever, or lambs. They don't do it anymore. Why? Jesus, he said 70, it was in 70 years, this whole thing's going to be over, folks. And it was. But Jesus changed that ordinance. He, he combined the old with the new. But, and by take, partaking of the Passover meal, Jesus was saying, it is fulfilled. Its purpose is over. Now we have something new. The Mosaic Covenant is finished. Something new now. It's called the new and better covenant. Amen. Based on better promises. And, and, and the moment when he said these words... For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remissions of sins. The Lord's Supper, what we're going to receive today, now becomes the sign of the new covenant. It's the sign. Now, I taught on this Wednesday night, so some people are hearing it again, but Amen. faith comes by hearing. Amen. Right. And Paul underscores it, too. It, it, that it's a memorial. We're remembering something. And, you know, we have to put ourselves in remembering it's of things. You know, how many of you have, you know, uh, you buy a, a, a TV or you buy a washing machine, a dryer, a dishwasher, and you get the extended warranty. Yeah. 
Well, the minute that little puppy is not working right, you have to put yourself in remembrance of the extended warranty. So you get it out, and I go, am I covered? The extended warranty. And let me tell you, you're covered. All right, this is the extended warranty. And boy, we run to it. I got a thing in the mail the other day. And I thought it was from my washing machine, but I remember I didn't take the extended warranty on that one. I don't think. But I did on my dishwasher. But now it's up. They want another $200 for having the extended warranty just in case it breaks. So I'm thinking, yeah, this dishwasher that cost me $400 ended up costing me $1,000. <laughs> so, so I know I have to think, do I want to like get the extended warranty or just take my shot with it? Because if I go buy a new one, it's going to cost me $400. I'm really ahead of the game. Just figured I'd put that out there for you, I don't know. But anyway, but Paul underscores it. Paul said, in the same manner, he, talking about Jesus, also took the cup after, cup or saying, after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. And when we receive communion, I always use that. And people always ask me, why do I use... 1 Corinthians. Because Jesus gave Paul those instructions. When he was in Arabia, up in the mountain, hiding out, learning the things of God, God showed him that particular thing. So, that brings us to us. You know, the new covenant. It was made with Israel, no doubt about it. But how do we benefit from it? We have to benefit from it. You see, the rules, the regulations, that you know, we live under a, th a, a, a thing called grace. Amen. God's riches at Christ's expense. It's called grace. And, and people, you have to be careful when you preach a lot of grace, but I believe that we are in the age of grace. We are under grace and that's just the way it is. Amen. But in Acts chapter 15, verses 6 to 10, it's the first ecumenical council that they ever had. And it says, now the apostles, in verse, starting in verse 6, it says, now the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. And this matter was, do the Gentiles have to keep all the rules and regulations? Yeah. That's what it was about. I just love these people that said, we got to keep the law. No, you don't. Jesus did away with it that night at the Last Supper. So now apostles and now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, I guess they were still fighting about it, but we're still fighting about it today. But anyway, Peter rose up and said to the to them, men and brethren, you know that a a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the hearts, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Ghost just as he did us. And made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. It's over. It's this wonderful relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. This new covenant that gives us all these wonderful promises. All we have to do is live by faith. Trust. Whether you're Jewish, whether you're Gentile, you know. So, you know, we approach it. I always read from Psalm chapter 103, and I'm just going to read it again because these are the blessings. This, you know, when you get your, you, when you get your uh, car insurance, they give you the, uh, uh, what's that first page? The declaration page. So here we are, Psalm 100, it's the declaration page of all your benefits that are in here, okay? And he goes, 
Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. The first one, you need to be thankful. You need to be blessing God. The word bless means to honor God yes. every day. You get up and honor God. God, I'm thankful. I'm so blessed that I'm your child. Yes. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You, you, you are the subject. You have to do it. Yes. It's not just going to happen automatically. Come on. You have to bless the Lord, O oh your soul. And forget. You have to remember to forget not all his benefits. You. It's done on God's behalf. Yes, hallelujah. You've got to remember the benefits you have. Yes, yes. Who forgives what? All your iniquities. All your iniquities. I don't care what you've done. How bad you've been. You've been a drug addict, a prostitute. I don't care what you've been in life. God forgives you. I don't care if you drove here with a needle sticking out of your arm. God forgives you. Yes. Amen. Who heals all your diseases. Come on. Yes. All your diseases. Come on. Well, you don't know, I have some. It's only one in eight gazillion people get it. I don't care. The declaration page says he heals all my diseases. I don't care if you're the only person in the planet that has it. He, for, he healed it. Amen. Redeems your life from destruction. You know, I, I, I think about all the people that ruin their lives with doing stupid things, whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. God redeemed. You know what redeem means? Means to buy back. You know, being in the on the boardwalk business in the arcades, them people love them tickets. So they could go to the redemption center and get the prizes. Jesus went to the redemption center. And you're the prize. Oh my God. You might not feel like a prize, but you are a prize. He'll take your life that you've destroyed and give it back to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Renewed. Running over. Crowns your life. Crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you. You feel you've been beat down. God, loving kindness and tender mercy towards you. That's right. I've been abused. You don't know. My, my mother abused me. My father abused me. Whether it's a sexually abused, verbally abused, physically abused, it don't matter. God will fill you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Yes. Amen. He will rock you in his ever-loving arms. Yes. Satisfies your mouth with good things. Yes, sir. It's talking about your life. Yes. God wants you to have good things. So you're renewed. So your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm. And last, and this is just, these are just, I mean, it's in here in depth. Amen. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all that are oppressed. You oppressed? Well, I'm guessing you better read that verse 6. Come on. Amen. Better understand that one. Because he executes righteousness and justice for you. Amen. That Amen. means you don't have to do it. You don't need to get even. God will get even. Come on. And all these benefits are ours. Because we are. The seed of Abraham. We just hanging out doing nothing. Jesus come along. We weren't even born yet. One day, somebody told you about Jesus. You know, I heard about Jesus all my life. Didn't, I didn't move me that much. 
But one day I was searching. Let's face it, I had it together. I did. I mean, I had a beautiful house, beautiful wife, beautiful kids, a lot of money. A lot of money. I could do anything I wanted. I had it, man. I could go to Florida anytime I felt like it. Come on. Go on vacation anytime I felt like it. See a guy in the street, throw him a hundred dollar bill. Because we used to have terms for them. Back then, before I was saved. Just, hey, get that gift. He needs it. He's going to spend it. He's going to drink it up. Give him the hundred bucks. Who cares? There's more where that came from. So that's the attitude. Because we had it together. Until one day Jesus showed me I didn't have it so much together. <laughs> Changed my life. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Because money ain't everything. No. But it's way ahead of what comes next. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> figured I'd throw that out. It's not, though. I know plenty of people who are millionaires that are miserable. Oh, Jesus, help me. Just not happy. Miserable. There's never have enough. But thank God, I was redeemed. Amen? So we're on the seed of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9 says in the scripture, For seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In all you, in you, all nations will be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Wow, I like that. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Why? Be be having become a curse for us. Jesus took our place on the cross. It should have been us hanging there. But it wouldn't have done any good if we hang there because we weren't the Messiah. Amen. All right? But cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham what, might come on the Gentiles. That means when I receive Jesus, the blessings of Abraham are mine. Not only am I going to heaven, not only are my sins forgiven, but the blessings of Abraham belong to me. Amen. And when I receive that cup and that bread this morning, I'm reminding myself that I am the seed of Abraham. Yes, Jesus hallelujah. died on a cross for me. And, I, and the blessings of Abraham belong to my, me. Verses 26 and 29 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you were baptized into Christ and put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Neither is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. That's why we receive communion. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How do we do it? By faith. Three times in the New Testament. It says in Romans chapter 1 verse 7. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. And Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. The just shall live by faith. So, if you are Abraham's seed, then you are just. And the promises become yours by faith. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Glory to God. We were living by faith and believing the word of God. Amen. <laughs> And that's, so, that's what's so awesome about the new covenant. That's the beauty of the new covenant. We don't have to do anything but live right and believe. Amen. Walk it. You know, I don't even like to say live right because that conjures up a whole lot of crazy little things that people need to do to live right, you know. We need to walk in love. Yes. Believe God and walk in love. Yes, hallelujah. And then they're mine.
Because if you walk in love, you'll live right. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. So, we'll close with this music ministry. You can come up here. We're going to hand out the communion elements. So we've been, again, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, according to Galatians chapter 3, 13. And the curse of poverty, sickness, and death, has, spiritual death, has been lifted from us. Because Jesus became the curse for us. And when we received this this morning, we were putting ourselves in remembrance. All the good things that belong to me. Can you say amen? amen. And before they just, guys, just hold up. Don't hand them out yet. I want everybody to bow their heads. Close your eyes and bow your heads this morning. You know, maybe you're here, you heard me talk about a lot of stuff. You probably don't understand it all. It doesn't matter. I didn't understand nothing. All I knew is I was a train wreck ready to crash. And somebody said, Jesus will turn your life around. I said, oh, I've been hearing that all my life. He hasn't done nothing yet. Because I never asked him to come and live in my heart. I went to Catholic school, was raised in the Catholic Church. My father was the organ player in the Catholic Church. The priests were always over my house. But I never said, Jesus, come and live in my heart. Amen. I knew about Jesus. I could talk about Jesus. I went to church every Sunday where they worshipped Jesus. But Jesus was never my Savior. Personally, I never asked him to come into my heart and live. And I remember that night in October in 1976, standing on the dock in Island Heights at the very end, saying, God, my, I, I'm not happy. My life is screwed up. I have everything you could want. And I'm miserable as they come. I says, and all that my friend used to tell me is, when you're ready, just ask Jesus to come into your heart. Amen. And that night, and I will never forget it, it was a moonlit night, it was starry, and that, the Island Heights was like a sheet of glass. And I was sitting there on that little bench, having a little conversation with God, and I said, I'm just going to do what my friend said. I'm going to ask Jesus to come in my heart. Because I'm doing a pretty bad job of this whole deal. And I did. And I said, Lord, I don't even understand that. I, I, there was no sinner's prayer and all this kind of stuff. I just said, gee, God, I'm believing what Bobby said. He said, you love me. Jesus loves me. And he died for me. And he come into my heart and, and, and get my life straight now. And I said those words. And within five seconds of me saying those words, fish came up out of that water, like in a cartwheel. I'm thinking, I should have brought my fishing pole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think that. But it, they did, man. They were like, they went, whoosh. I said, wow, I, I never saw that. They were like, I mean, it was like, it was like 15 of them. They just went, and that was like the sign that Jesus said, kid, everything's going to be all right. And you know what? I've been saved almost 40 years, and it's been all right. Woo! Hallelujah! It has been all right, my friend. So if you're here this morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you are here this morning, and you've never received Jesus, look at me. I was a street kid. I I'm telling you. I wasn't raised in a, I was, I come from a long line of bookies, not a long line of preachers. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want your life changed, yes. Jesus will change it. Yes, All you need to do is ask him to come into your life. Amen. With every head, head bowed and every eyes closed, let's pray. Say, Jesus, I don't care if you prayed it. If you're saved, pray it anyway. It'll help your heart. Amen. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I ask you today, ask you today to, come into my life, to come into my life, to come into my heart, to, into my heart, to make it new, to, make it new, to, recreate, it, to recreate it, to fill me with your spirit, fill me with your, spirit, fill me with your love. Fill me with and 
Tonight today, Tonight today boldly, declare boldly declare that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, my is my Savior, and I am, and I am the seed, the seed of, Abraham. of Abraham. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Amen. We're going to receive communion here this morning. So yes, it's one question. That's the first time you ever prayed a prayer like that. Just look up your hand for a second so I can see I got anybody. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gloria, stand up. On the chair. See that? See that young lady right there? If you prayed that prayer for the first time, just take one minute. She'll come right up here when we're dismissed. Take one minute, come up here, and introduce herself, yourself to her. And she's going to give you a book, okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pass out the communion elements this morning. And let's be in an attitude of prayer as the, as the ushers are passing them out. And just examine your heart. Say, Lord, if I have all but anybody, uh, 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 forgive me. Forgive me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, play something soft in the background here. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, my the chain. Father, we love.